Good evening to my champs all around the world. It's your boy Champ, man. We back with another episode of Chatting with the Community. Yo, it's been, I think, two weeks. Nah, nah, it's been like a month, yo. I, needless to say, I was on, on daddy duty for, the, for that little month, man. Both of my baby boys' birthdays is on um, March. So March, um, I couldn't really move how I wanted to, man. If y'all know kids is expensive, let alone two big old boys, man. But they're my babies, man. I had to put them first. But you know, we back at it once again, building with the family. Hoping everybody's been staying positive, staying motivated, staying real, breathing, being in the moment, and being yourself. We on another episode of Chat with the Community and today. We ride on Albany Avenue in between Blue Hills and Woodland, right across Bravo Plaza. Honestly, I forgot where we was at. This, this wind is bugged. I forgot where we was at last time. I ain't even gonna hold you, but I think we were somewhere on, matter of fact, we was on Main and Nelson. There you go. We was on Main and Nelson. And now today we on um, Albany Avenue in between Woodland and Blue Hills. Just want to check in with everybody on a scale of 1 to 10. I'm a good 9 right now. You know, I've been bobbing and weaving. It's always a different fight, but the same ring. So, you know, I try to adapt to my fighters. But, yeah, stick to what I know best and come what I know and, and believe in myself. But, you know, um, no two days are the, no two days are alike. I got good days and I got better days. You know what I mean? So, needless to say, it's always a... Um, a growing process, a learning process, and um, each day we got to learn to have a type of intention or a type of goal that puts us in a perspective of being focused and, and having a conscious mind going forward because if we don't have a goal in mind or something to aim for, we'll get lost in space and before you know it, we we, 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 we 35 but we 17 if you get what I'm saying, like you know what I mean? And, we just got to find new ways of thinking, new ways of encouraging ourselves, building our own confidence and not getting stagnated or complacent in things that affected us in the past, things we worried about, things we think too much about. Because honestly, it's a cycle. How you feel gives you thoughts and what you think about determines how you feel. So we have to, in so many ways, consciously find ways to feel good and build thoughts of how we feel and feeling so we can feel better. You know what I mean? Which takes a lot, a lot of practice, a lot of intention, and a lot of concentration. But I know that we can do it as, as a people because we've been doing this for millenniums. You know what I mean? But needless to say, today's conversation, man, I can't help but want to discuss what are the solutions to single parent homes, right? So I've been doing a study for the past month. Well, I ain't going to say a study. I've just been, you know, searching for different type of results. And I don't want to say it in a skewed way. But needless to say, I was looking for one thing and opened up a door. I opened up Pandora's, Pandora's box. And I'm reading a lot of statistics about single parent homes. And a lot of these statistics are based off middle class families and, you know, a lot of um, well off to do families. And even with that, they sort of present percentages and the outcome 
victims and the risk factors that comes with single parent homes when it comes to low income families. Man, after 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 after, after I seen after I seen them joints, man. I just couldn't help but feel away, man, because granted I didn't live in a single parent home. My father was dead, but my father worked two to three jobs. You feel me? And he had child support for my for my brother and my sister. So it's not like his check did something for us. And we family, you feel me? So we could talk like this. I, we could. And my mom's had to do a lot of the carrying. My father did all he could. You feel me? Broke his back, everything. But it was still, you feel me, hard. So my mom had to carry a lot of the weight. And even with that, my father working from like 5 in the morning to like 5 in the morning. So all we seen was my mom. We saw my father on weekends and when we could. But day to day was mom. So a lot of my energy and a lot of my thinking and a lot of my processing I had sprinkles of my pops and a lot of my our, our deal conversations and bills. You go, bro. What's up? A lot of our dear conversations and bills are always holding my heart. Every every time I had a chance to build and be with my father, man, I loved it, man. That, that was that's my that's my superhero, man. That's my pops, man. That's my feel me my creator i love that man like like no other but needless to say even he know like my mom is like god like not even like god to me my mom is god like you feel me so i even come to understand when i go through certain circumstances and i go through certain adversities a lot of times when i'm going through it i'll be like yo i'm acting like a bitch man like oh why the fuck i'm acting like you know what i mean and i can't help but to be like damn even with that, I know I got a piece of me where it's like, man, I ain't gonna go out like that. We're gonna, we gonna tighten up, we're gonna get busy. But that initial, you know what I mean? I couldn't help but think, like, damn, man. I wonder how many of my friends had self reflection to wonder or, or be curious enough to know how much of their mother's input in their life and catering through their life play a part in how they look at society and how it plays a part in how they interact with people, especially females. And even with the statistics as far as how households turn out with single fathers compared to single mothers, it's still a tragedy for the children. Like overall, they, 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 you can show who do who, who does better with who, but overall there's a piece that's gonna have that child or those children without, you know what I mean? And I'm just curious to know like, we've been normalizing single parent homes for a while now. Like, I don't even wanna get into the decades and centuries because we know with circumstances you have widows, you have prison, you have, you know what I'm saying? You got all type of circumstances. But y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. Like, let's not play. Y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. Like, y'all know what I'm talking about. And it's like, I don't really think we know for real, for real, for real, for real what that does to children. Because a lot of us look at it from a subjective perspective as far as what it does to them in the immediate instead of what is done in long term especially if our parents or parent has such a um solid foundation as far as look this is how it's gonna go don't talk back to me who you think you're talking to take your ass in the room what 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 like i'll smack like oh, that type of shit bro put you in a position where it's like you know what i mean like 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 oh damn so when you get used to that type of behavior and this is the same person that say Boy, don't make me smack the shit out your ass. But then in, in, in the flip, all right, now you know I love you, boy. I need you to know this, but, oh, baby, you know I love you, but, you know what I'm saying? And then pop your ass in the mouth, like, without no explanation. So it's like we going through emotions. Do I, you love me or not? <laughs> you love me or not? Because you confusing me, man. Just the other day, I was a, a little motherfucker who, who lazy, irresponsible. Now you proud of me. So it's like, when you don't have um, that type of communication to break it down, I'm like, yo, this is why I felt like this. Excuse me how I did this, because I'm going through. Son, I need a baby, you know what I mean? If we don't get that part, we just going to be like, okay, okay I, I mean, I, I. So then when we get in relationships or friendships, it's that sugar salt. Yo, I can speak for myself. It's sugar salt. 
a piece of what my mom gave me being nice to y'all niggas. I'm not gonna buy a slice of pizza if we can't share it or fuck it, let's go to the corner store. That's the mom in me. The sharing, the the, 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 make, the nurturing, like man, I'm I'ma feel bad. Man, I feel bad. But on the flip side, if you around motherfuckers who not on that time, you a fool. Niggas gonna put you in a budget. Man, we know home gonna have the weed, we know home gonna order the pizza. We know we could be at home crib playing the video game, like all that, bro. Like, without no boundaries. Because the piece you naturally gravitated from that from your mom. But then you got pieces of your father that's like, motherfucker, hell no, nigga. Like, nigga, let's go to your house tonight. Or we can't go to your shit. Oh, yeah, niggas can't go to my shit neither. Oh, no, hell no. Like, then the piece you got that selfish, strong boundary where it's like, this is where I'm at. You know what I mean? So it's like, for certain individuals to grow up without that part. Or for individuals just to grow up with just that part and without the nurturing and, and understanding and being conscious of others. It's just gonna be a, a fence in the wall. And we got certain circumstances where a lot of our women feel like, yo, I could change this person. Or I wanna be the person to change this dude. And not knowing that's not always the case. And a lot of that comes from a lot of, you know, imagination or certain success stories, success stories that may not speak to the normality as far as the, the, the numeral um, availability, what we see is, the, is, is norm, normality. But at the same time, it's like, yo, what do we do, man? Like, why does it always have to be us? Like, why are we always the people that can't seem to have a stable family, bro? Like, that shit gets crazy. It's to the point where it's like we got generations of this, bro. My father got this many kids, this many baby mamas. That ain't that's his half daughter. That ain't his real daughter. She came in later. She got a whole nother baby father. He just took her when she was down. That ain't his real daughter. Like we go through this shit throughout the whole block, the whole block. Damn. God damn. I remember, yo, I ain't gonna say who are no names or even what streets, none of that. I remember living on a certain street, man, and, 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 and it was a single mom. Tough motherfucking single mom. I mean, she was like unk on the block. Like, she was like big unk. And whenever her sons would get into some shit, like, or they'll come to her, but you know what I mean? She wasn't playing that, bro. You know, some mothers expecting you to be like, you know, I don't want you outside fighting. Take your ass in the house. Chill out. No, nigga, she was outside with these little niggas like this. You better whoop his ass. You better, you better not let your, you gonna let your mother fight? Get your, I'm in the back like, oh, this shit is crazy. I get, I, I overstand it though, cause it's a trainer, cause of, God damn. Then you know what's quiet is kept. This the funny part. If I'm lying, I'm flying. I wish my, bro, I wish my brother was. It. Yo, I'd have seen a nigga father stop a whole wall. I done seen a street full of people. But th th this shit getting turnt now. Like, th this getting serious. Motherfuckers pulling up. Niggas don't know who, who. Now we're just like, all right, now, like, all right. They ain't, th this, this is getting serious now. One man in the 60s, probably was in the 70s. If y'all know, y'all know. Came down the block like this. No, nah, we ain't doing that over here. Cleared the whole block. Nope. Cleared the whole block. 
without licking the shot by yourself and I'm not saying that to compare women to men what I'm saying is we need both together and it's crazy because I've, I've heard more women say I could raise a, a, a boy by myself I don't need a man I'll keep it a being I've never heard a man say I, I could raise my son without the help of home mom even if home a single father I got I got real friends out here real friends out here that's my friends that we have conversations and the common denominator is always the same if you're gonna do you my girl you're gonna do you but let me do be able to do what i do with my child i ain't even trying to rain on your parade do you but let me so what's the solution like even if we can't be together there's statistics that's against our children growing up in single homes. They're more than likely to go to jail, have behavior problems, psychological disorders, depression, anxiety, stress, violent outbursts. And this is just growing up with either mom or dad. Now, we got a community where a lot of unfortunate circumstances took place where 80% uh, 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 of, of, of women are, are, are the head of household or the parent. So now we got 80%. I'm just curious, man. This is getting painful. Because if you really put yourself in the shoes of what the statistics look like, and you got children, oh, shout out to the fall. And you got children, you can't help but to be like, yo, is this bigger than me? But at the same time, do I deserve to go through pain and agony for the sake of my children, even if it's going to affect them if I'm not the best me? Do you stay in a household where you're not going to be able to function and, and, and be effective for the sake of your children and your children pick up on that and they're now they're picking up on bad energy, confrontation, arguments, but at the same time, is it worth your children seeing you with this girl or this dude and then this dude and this girl, then you by yourself, then you back together and you're not like, we the only ones that go through that like that, man, and it's painful. I, I remember seeing little niggas always talking about, man, home had like five uncles, and I'm just like this. Feel me? Like, man. And it's like we, we, we separate for egotistical reasons, not knowing that it's harder. It's a fact that mothers, single mothers make less than single fathers. So now single mothers got to make a dollar stretch for as many kids, but then seek validation from another man that's not this child's father just to get treated the same way as a father would have been there anyway. I'm an advocate for marriage. I love women. I love women. I love my mom. My mom is a mother, obviously. Both of my sisters, all three of my sisters are mothers. So I get it. I got a boatload of fucking aunts. Cousins, all females. But I got those male cousins too, man, that I know. I know. Like, I know. Like, I got uncles. I got brothers. I got male cousins, grandfathers, a father that I know, like, that put in that work, bruh, broke they back, child support or not, child support giving they all, for kids they know they can't see, spend time with, but still giving they all, cause it's just in them, cause it's just in them, she ain't let me see them, but I'ma do my part so they can have it still, she got a whole nother nigga around my kid, raising my kids, and I'm giving child support, and I can't get a birthday card for 20 years, but I'm still providing. Niggas got to go through. Yeah.
yo, I don't even want to go to that male versus female aspect. Because we'll be here all day. My intention of this whole thing was the male and female. About us coming together, figuring out ways to not continue to perpetuate the single homes. Especially in our low income communities. We can't afford to be single homes. And trying to raise young boys without fathers. And young girls without mothers. And young boys without mothers. And young girls without fathers. Like... Yes, yeah, Sam. Oh my God, yo, Sam, it's it's Sam. It, it, it break my heart, man, cause I got uncles, man. I got a father. I watch my father go through this. I watch my father go through this. It, it, yo, it's it's unfortunate because I, I see my aunts go through. I got some aunts that went through some unfortunate circumstances because niggas ain't step up. So I've seen both sides. I get the duality, man. That's why I'm so intentional on trying to find solutions between us as far as what can we do, bro? This is sad because I don't want nobody being in miserable relationships because we so in these same boxes of ego and toxicity. But at the same time, bro, our children are growing up with, 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 with half of what they need to get through life. On a, on a, just as a wreck. Imagine your remote with a double A battery and then a triple A battery. Look, 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 let me find the statistic, right? Let me find one. The CDC, the CDC says 85% of our children who show behavior disorders come from fatherless homes. 85%. Here you go, bro. Yes, sir. Go home safe. 85% of children that show behavior issues come from fuck. What else we got, yo? What else we got? Hold on. We about to get to the facts. According to the National Principals Association report on high schools, 71% of high school dropouts come from fatherless homes. 71% of high school dropouts come from father. All right, breathe. I got, I'm trying to practice my, my, my public speaking just in case I, I land a TED Talks one day or I get on Oprah or somebody. So let me try to... All right, let me stop again. So, all right, let's get it back. Bang. All right, you feel me? Let's do it. The Department of Health and Human Services. 71% of pregnant teens had no dad present in their lives. 71% of teens pregnant had no father in their lives. According to Brook, Brookings.edu, children Raised by single mothers are more likely to fear worse on a number of dimensions, including the school achievement, social and emotional development, the health, the success in the labor market. They are at greater risk of parental abuse and neglect. And I'm not saying this to bash mothers. This is just part of the research that I've been doing as far as the advocacy that I'm doing for, for this particular project. Because I know I got a lot of friends, I got a lot of family that uh, debate that and, and say things like, you know, my mother did this for me. Like, don't get it fucked up. I got a mom too, B. Like, don't get it twisted. I already know. But at the same time, them times when my father was at work from 5 in the morning till 5 in the morning or 5 to, to 12, 12 in the morning, I knew what the fuck I was getting away with. I knew exactly what I was doing. Let's not even play. 
And it wasn't till my mama feel some way, but like, you know what, I'm about to tell you. And my father whooped my ass like no tomorrow. And then I'm like this. So maybe I, I know I was fortunate. However, my mother tried to, my mother did all she could. My mother raised me to be a beautiful individual. My mother gave me so many tools that, oh my Lord, I could start crying. I could start crying on the life that my mother presented me from her perspective. I, I, I could start crying and get emotionally sensitive from the jewels and the lessons and the, and the, and the, and my mom, yo, my mom, this is how my mom used to be. When I used to, when I, y'all gotta remember, I grew up in Oakland, California before I even came to Connecticut. You know what I was doing. When I was a kid in Oakland, California, if anybody know about Oakland, California, there was a place called Lake Mary. My mom used to work across the street, like they were in the same vicinity as Lake Mary. So certain times when we used to come to her job, my mom used to take us on a walk around the lake and she would make that shit seem like a, 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 a walk. Like, 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 I can't even explain it, yo. Like she pointing out the simplest things. Ooh, look at that, that's so beautiful. You remember when you be a little kid, and since you get it, you, you blow, and the shit blow like. Here, mommy, my mom used to. My mom still got some of them shits. My mother still got flowers I gave her from when I was a little boy. My mother, when I used to fall and scrape my knees, even if we had band aids or alcohol or peroxide or rags or whatever at the time, her hugs and her embracement and her kiss on my forehead. I forgot about the pain. When she used to make grilled cheese sandwiches or hook up a nice big ass breakfast and dinner, I used to be like, yo, or, or this used to be our thing because like my mom used to usually on a regular, you know, it used to be just grits, eggs, and bacon. You feel me? And when she used to make, fr my mother never really made pancakes. She never made pancakes. But when she used to make French toast, I used to think like I either got a good report card or some. My pops hit the lottery or somebody got a. Well, I ain't know about bonuses. But some shit went down. If moms make a French toast, nigga, something popping went down. We don't know about, but fuck it. If my mom would make this French toast with the grits and the eggs and the bacon, I used to be in a like like. And don't get a twist. We had our cereal days and cereal nights and our hard pork and bean nights. But like Pac said, like. The way, the, the, the whole Dear Mama song concept, you just felt it. You just loved it. However, however, when it came to a certain age, when I got outside and decided to go outside, everything, everything my mom ta taught me and gave me was numb and void. It was null and void. Everything my mother gave me and taught me when it came to females outside, it, it just the world as a whole and the scope she gave me with, it killed me out here. I, me and my mother, and I love, that's my best friend. Me and my moms talk every day. And, I, and when we get into this conversation, I tell her like, mom, I love you, to, you mommy, you my queen, you my son, you my sunshine, you my everything. But you raised me in a way where I'm damaged because you you didn't prepare me for for this part. Like like the part where everybody don't look at the sun, the, 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 the sunshine and, and the flowers on the walk or on the way home from from from, from East 14, from East Mount Mall. We used to walk home the 35th and walk down 88th in the middle of the fucking hood in Oakland and used to make the smallest thing so beautiful in the middle of the ghetto on a walk home. You would make everything so amazing. But when you wasn't there, when those moments when I got to be an adolescent, those lessons didn't click with the crowd and the normality at that time. That time I needed my father more than ever. And I ain't even gonna do my father like that. My pops was a real ass nigga, bruh. My father didn't raise me like, son, I'm gonna take you to the baseball game because you earned a report card. Son, let's go get some popcorn. Nah, nigga, my father used to pick me. 
man, I even go, my, man, I love my, that was my, man, my pops, man. My father raised me different, yo, so different that I didn't know what the fuck I was going through. But I overstood it now that I'm a grown man now. Like, my father would be the type, like, my father from, from New Haven. My father from New Haven, from Rockview Circle, the projects in New Haven. Westville, me and the Brookside, all that, all out there. And he would bring me out there, like, and had me fight little niggas, fight niggas my age out there. And Lord knows I didn't want to do it, because mind you, I'm my mother's son. If anything, I'm trying to find a reason to be cool with niggas. Like, man, let's just play ball my father while not knowing he, these niggas is drooling. Because they smell my, the mother on me. They smell my mom on me. So these niggas is like, nah. Like, I don't know if these niggas got paid for whatever, but at the end of the day, my father threw me in a dog ring early before I even knew what the fuck he was doing with me. But threw me in a dog ring with no explanations. And I had to go through that gauntlet. And once I got older, I overstood the value ship of how fathers display love, how they display value. It may not be in the form of mothers, how we, how they convey and, and, and explain and, and patch up and heal. A lot of our fathers put us through tests. My father was one of them fathers like, bruh, you keep fucking with your sister? Why your sister say you you, you want to fight your sister? Right? Like, come on, let's go get in the car. And now you like this. What you mean get in the car like this? Get in the car. Home, but you want to fight your... All right, let me see. Like, bruh. And when you little, it don't make sense. It's like, I don't think my father loved me, bruh. I think this nigga hate me. Then when you get to a certain age, you like, yo, I, I love you, yo. I love you, yo. I love you. So when I think about my moments of my parents having two different realities, two different ways of going about living, two different perceptions entirely, literally sugar and salt, I can't help but to be cognitive and empathetic and, and sympathetic with my brothers and, and, and friends and cousins that didn't have at least some type of duality in the presence, whether it was healthy or not. I know a lot of our family that got relationships or had relationships or have children. A lot of things took place, but it, it, there's no coming back. There's no fixes. There's no. There's no amending certain things. But needless to say, man, from my mouth to y'all ears, man, we we have to cultivate an atmosphere where we know our children know at one point that their parents loved each other when they were made. A lot of our children have to go up and feeling like I'm the result of a fuck at the club, bro. Like, a lot of them don't get to hear a story like, yo, I met your moms, I seen her, that was my, I knew right there that was my queen, and we went through whatever, we had mistakes, so we just didn't work out, but needless to say, I love her, and we had you, and I'm proud of her, and what she doing, and I'm happy we made you, I couldn't have made her without you. It's like when one kid get with the mom, it's like, you fuck your father, da -da -da -da. Oh, you know your mother, your mom always wanted to fuck her mom, she, it's like, God damn, what a... I'm a product of both of y'all, and I'm here. Both of y'all not like each other. So what you think that? I want us to do better. I want us all to do better. We all going through this shit. And it's so twisted. It's so... God damn, man, I, I can't stand it, but like, like we gotta get back to the basics as far as a village then, man. We gotta be a village. If, if, if our brothers and sisters are having difficulties and unfortunate circumstances when it comes to raising children, that's what we need them extended uncles, them extended big cousins, them extended big brothers, them extended big sisters, them, big, them extended big aunts. That, that You know what I mean? We all play a role in which they feel like, all right, I may not have my mom's or my pop's right there, but I'm surrounded by so many people that's family in the family sense that love me that, that I, I, you know what I mean? I, I can find something. If, if everybody all signed on some shit like, well, nigga, I ain't going for my father. I ain't got my mother. Need. Bro, that's a cold ass place to live, man. Oh my, yo.
Yeah, yo. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like, and always will feel like, we have to find some sense of ground of understanding and communication before we have children. Before we even have children, I think we need to really consider whom we're laying down with, who we're conceiving with, because our children don't deserve to grow up to say, I see my dad on weekends. I see my dad from Friday to Sunday. I live with my mom. I don't talk to my dad. I live with my dad. I don't talk to my mom. Like, our kids, bro, that type of pain and emptiness, man, that's why a lot of our young girls is promiscuous. That's why a lot of them is having sex early. That's why a lot of our young dudes are so, so, so sensitive and timid that, that they, that they got to resort to fucking violence and, and, and showing somebody not a punk. It, it, they don't got that male figure in their ear. They're like, man, nigga, you look like an off about responding to home. If anything, you look at home like, da 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 Who in the ear saying that? Well, we got mom that's like, oh, man, you better, see, you don't let him, talk. Like, you know what I mean? Like, come on, man. This shit is horrible. I, I, I don't want to say it's horrible because I, God, yeah, God damn, I know it. I know y'all know what I'm trying to say, man. Come on, man. Like, 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 for real, son. Like, this shit gets crazy, man. Little girls going up so fast, a little nigga sitting in the block. I'm like, yo, who you, how old is the nigga you call an OG, bro? Because I don't think you really know what an OG is. For you to be thinking how you moving and moving, that somebody don't care about you that you care about. That's not a father figure, man. I need you to know this. Well, that's, that, my, that's like, like we got to build gaps. There's no way that y'all feel comfortable walking around certain children, certain teenagers, certain young adults, knowing that they potentially could harm your kid if you don't. Come, come on, man. Like. I'm not going to say the solution is always stay together. Some relationships are more toxic and some relationships are safer when they're apart. However, we got to find a realm of healthy habits, healthy communication to where our children can still have room to see the parents together, even if it's on weekends. Let them see y'all together. Let them see us together from that Friday to Sunday, at least doing something so they could be like, all right, I may not know what's going on, but I know, I, I see, you know what I mean? Something to build with. Not just them not seeing nothing but pictures and got to depend on stories from niggas from the block. Like, yeah, hey, your pops was like this and your father was like this. And then you got your mom saying your father was a, was a shit. He like, it's like, you got no idea. So it's like, I got to try to go off what I'm hearing from niggas so I could be like, you know, I'm a father's son. Because, you know, I'm a father's son. Niggas said my father had hella hoes. My father had hella bitches. So... Let me get hella bitches. But my mom said that I got to love girls. So I got to, come on, man. We got to find a motherfucking balance before our kids go crazy out here. Because we don't explain that to our kids. Listen, you don't do what I do. You do what I tell you to do. That shit don't work. I was sold that my whole life. And that fucked me up. No, nah, nigga, break this down to me. This got to make sense. Because if not, I'm lost. Let alone children who don't have a That's Hilda Holmes. That's Hilda Holmes. Let's build bridges. And let's make sure our children are cared for. Let's find ways. There's no way that our children don't know their grandparents on both sides. Don't have a relationship with their grandparents on both sides. There's no way that our children don't know their great great grandparents' names. Don't know their family roots. Don't know what's like. There's no way they should just know I'm from the North End. My family from the South End. Like, no, bro. It's like we we have to give them a sense of belonging to, a sense of foundation, a sense of 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 of, of worthiness, a, se a sense of value, and it stems from the family first. That's the root of life. It can't just be my father from this block or my mom's new home too, and she went to the pub or he went to Weaver. Like, no, we got to show our kids a different sense of why you're here, a sense of. Why your value, a, a, a purpose, man? I didn't just have have a kid with your mom for no reason, man. I knew I wanted a son. I knew I wanted a daughter. Like, give your kid that spark. 
Give, especially if y'all know the parents not together. If y'all not together, that mean that quality time should be a time where it's like not only are we spending this together, but I'm gonna make sure you leave here knowing that your parents like I don't need you to be fighting. Like just know, man, this type of stuff happens. I love your moms, man. I, I'm so happy that she had you for me, man, and we came together for you. I'm, I love you to death, boy, girl. Give me kiss. You my baby. Tell your mom, you know what I'm saying. If she need me, I'll, like, you know I got y'all. Be safe. I'll, next week we go out for pizza. We could order the fight. We could watch WrestleMania. Like, that's it. That's it. That, that's it, Holmes, man. I've been here for a minute. Like I said, I'm right between Albany Avenue, Blue Hills, and Woodland Street. It's been real. Y'all know I love y'all like no other. It wouldn't be no me without y'all. And we're going to continue to build each other up, man. I love y'all, man. Until next time, y'all know the mantras. We're going to breathe, be in the moment, and be ourselves. Stay positive. Stay motivated. Stay real. One.